It's not fair. I muttered under my breath as I stood in the garden, feeling the warmth of the sun on my shoulders. My mother was at it again, her camera poised and ready to capture another photo of me in this dress. It wasn't just any dress, it was a frilly, blue skirt and a tight white tank top that made me feel more exposed than I had ever been. Hold still, Jimmy, she instructed, adjusting the focus. I could hear the click of the camera, capturing yet another moment in this bizarre chapter of my life. I didn't understand why she insisted on doing this. A year ago, everything changed. My dad left us, ran off with his secretary, and left mom and me to fend for ourselves. Mom had always wanted a daughter, and I guess when he left, something in her snapped. Mom, please, can we stop? I pleaded, hoping she would see how uncomfortable I was. But her eyes, filled with a strange mixture of sadness and determination, met mine. Just a few more, Jimmy. I want to see the progress, she said softly, lowering the camera for a moment. You know how much this means to me. Progress. That's what she called it. She was watching my body change, documenting every moment as if it were some kind of scientific experiment. My chest was beginning to swell, and it scared me. I didn't want this. I just wanted to be normal, to be the boy I used to be, but it felt like that boy was slipping away with each click of the camera. I sighed, resigning myself to the situation. Maybe one day she would stop, or maybe I would find the courage to tell her how much this hurt. But for now, all I could do was stand there and let her take her pictures, hoping that somewhere in the flashes and the focus, she would find the daughter she had always dreamed of. As the session continued, I looked out at the garden, trying to distract myself from the discomfort. The flowers were in full bloom, a riot of colors that contrasted sharply with the gray cloud that seemed to hang over my life. I wondered if I would ever feel as free as those flowers, or if I would always be trapped in this strange, new reality. All done for today, Mom finally said, lowering the camera and giving me a small, strained smile. Thank you, Jimmy. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. As I walked back into the house, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had been lost. I just hoped that one day, I could find it again. As the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, my mother's efforts to feminize me intensified. It started with the clothes, but it didn't end there. She began teaching me how to walk in heels, how to apply makeup, and even how to style my hair. At first, I resisted, but her persistence and the yearning in her eyes slowly wore me down. I couldn't deny her the happiness she seemed to derive from seeing me embrace this new identity. You're doing so well, sweetheart, she would say, beaming with pride as I managed to walk a few steps in the stiletto heels without stumbling. Her words, her approval, started to matter more to me than I wanted to admit. There was something comforting in her attention, in the way she fussed over me, that made the discomfort of my new role a little more bearable. One evening, as I sat at my vanity, painstakingly applying mascara under her watchful eye, I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. The person staring back at me was almost unrecognizable. Soft curls framed my face, my lashes long and dark, my lips painted a delicate pink. I looked like a girl. I looked like the daughter she had always wanted. Beautiful, she whispered, placing a gentle hand on my shoulder. You look absolutely beautiful, Jimmy. I tried to smile, but it felt forced. There was a strange mix of emotions swirling inside me. Part of me was proud of the progress I had made, of how far I had come in this journey. Another part of me felt a deep sense of loss, as if I was watching my old self fade away replaced by someone new. As time passed, I began to settle into my new identity. I learned to move with grace, to speak softly and sweetly, to present myself as the daughter my mother had always dreamed of. And in return, she showered me with love and affection, her eyes lighting up every time she looked at me. But the changes weren't just on the outside. Slowly, I found myself starting to think differently, to feel differently. I began to enjoy the rituals of femininity, the pampering, the fashion, the attention. 
I discovered a new kind of confidence, a new way of expressing myself that felt strangely liberating. One day, as we sat together in the garden, she turned to me with a look of deep affection. Jimmy, or rather, Jenny, she said softly, using the name she had given me, you've made me so happy. I know this hasn't been easy for you, but you've become the daughter I always wanted. Thank you. Her words touched something deep inside me. For the first time, I felt a sense of acceptance, of belonging. I realized that I wasn't just doing this for her, I was doing it for myself too. I had found a new kind of strength, a new way of being that felt more authentic than anything I had ever known. Thank you, mom, I replied, feeling tears well up in my eyes. Thank you for believing in me, for loving me. We hugged then, a long, tight embrace that felt like a promise. A promise that no matter what happened, we would face it together, as mother and daughter. And in that moment, I knew that I had truly become Jenny, not just for her, but for myself.